Hi there, all my crafty friends. I'm Donna from Mason Creations Etc. And welcome to my channel. We're going to do plate number two in my reverse take a on a glass plate series. This one is going to be so cute. It's going to have a tulip background and two of the cutest little Easter ducks. So if you are ready, let's make a mess. I got this blank clear plate at the dollar store and the first thing I'm going to do is wipe it down with an alcohol wipe to remove any dirt or fingerprints that may be on the glass. This is an important step so make sure you don't miss it. Now I'm going to coat the back side of the plate with polyvine multi-surface lacquer. I'm using dead flat finish. This product is a great primer for working on something with a gloss finish such as glass. You'll only put this on the back side of the plate as that is the only side we'll be working on. The front of the plate will remain as is clear glass. If you don't wish to see the captions, you have the ability to turn them off. Tap your screen, go into the settings icon in the top right corner, click on captions, then turn off captions. I elevated the plate on a paint container so the edges weren't touching anything. Notice that I'm brushing the lacquer from the center to the edge but not going over the edge. The Polyvine Lacquer and all of the products I'll be using today are from DecoupageNapkins.com right down to the paintbrush I'm using right now. I'm going to tell you all about them in just a little bit. This will need to dry for about three hours before moving on. I'm going to give this plate a vintage cracked porcelain appearance. I'm using Pentart's Fine Line Crackle Varnish. It's a two-part system and I'm brushing on component number one. I'll let that dry for about an hour or so until it's clear. DecoupageNapkins.com has such a great selection of rice papers as well as napkins that you can purchase one at a time. Rub-on transfers, molds, modeling clay, stencils, stamps, scrapbook paper, and much more. Over 7,000 products. They carry three lines of paint, Dixie Bell Chalk Mineral Paint, Clay Mud Paint, and Pentart Paints, and a wide range of colors. They are wonderful to work with and send out their orders fast. They are truly your one-stop shop for craft supplies. They offer several automatic discounts when checking out on orders over $50, $75, and $125. Subscribe to their newsletter by entering your email address and you'll receive 10% off your next order. Make sure you check them out. I'll leave you some links in my description box below. Once dry, I'll brush on component number two. This step is an amber color. Use thin, even strokes. If you get a buildup or drips anywhere, it'll show when dry. I'll let this dry for a couple of hours. Once dry, you'll see the cracks. After using fine line crackle varnish, you cannot use any water-based products. It will ruin your crackle finish. You can only use solvent-based antiques and sealers. Normally, we'd be putting on the crackle finish last, but we are doing everything in reverse today. Whatever would be done last will be done first when you do a reverse take -a I have some pretty good cracks, but I'm using my heat gun for just a couple of minutes and that will give me more cracks and make them a little deeper. I'm wiping over all the cracks with Pentart Antique Paste in Umber. Where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. It's fun to see what cities and countries you are all watching from. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. I'll wipe off the excess and it will remain in all the cracks.
This is one of my favorite crackle techniques. The fine line crackle varnish when dry looks like aged porcelain. Since I'll be using water-based products from here on, I need to add a coat of solvent-based varnish to protect my crackle finish. I'm using Pentart Glossy Solvent-Based Varnish. I'll give the plate a coat of this and let it dry for several hours. I added a piece of painter's tape on the other side of the plate as a marker of where I started, or I might keep painting in circles. Look at this cute napkin. I just love these little ducks. I'm separating one of the squares from the napkin and then I'll separate the layers. It's a three ply napkin and I'm only going to be using the top layer with the print on it. So I need to remove the other two layers. Now I'm using a water brush to remove most of the white background. The more you remove, the easier it is to work with. If you're enjoying this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. And why not share this with a friend? Thanks for doing that. I separated the two ducks at the top so I could work with one half at a time. A water brush has a cartridge that you fill with water and then brush it on the napkin. The water dispenses easily, so this is really convenient. You can find this in my description box below in my favorite tools section, just in case you want to check it out. I'm using a cut up Ziploc bag for this process. I'm putting the ducks right side up on the piece of plastic and spraying it with water. As I'm spraying the water, I'm moving the napkin around a little bit to pull out some of the large wrinkles and air bubbles. I'm doing this very delicately. If the napkin doesn't move easily, spray more water on it. The water won't hurt the napkin. It makes it easier to manipulate. I'm going to paint a small section of the silicone mat with Polyvine Heavy Duty Wood Varnish. I've tried some of the other formulas, but this particular one works best for this technique. I'm putting it on pretty heavy. Make sure the section that you paint is large enough for the image you're using. Now I'm going to turn over the piece of plastic with the ducks on it and lay it down very carefully on the wet polyvine. Don't worry about the napkin falling off. The water will have it stuck on the plastic so it won't fall. I'm starting laying it down at the bottom and slowly lay the rest of it down. The plastic is protecting the napkin, so you can smooth it out and rub out any air bubbles or wrinkles. After that, the plastic will easily lift off, leaving the napkin behind. I'm wiping up some of the water around my napkin image but being very careful not to touch the napkin. The napkin is pretty wet, so it'll need to dry for several hours. The napkin shrinks a little bit as it dries, and you can see that it's pulling up my mat a little bit, but that's okay. As it shrinks, it pulls out any tiny wrinkles that may have been there. Now I'm putting another coat of the polyvine on it while it's still on the mat. This step needs to be done very carefully with a real light touch. The napkin only has the one coat of polyvine on it, so it's still quite delicate and can tear easily. This coat will dry fast in about an hour, and then I'll add another coat and let it dry for about an hour. Once that coat is dry, it peels up off the mat really easily. Make sure you get a good mat for this. I tried one of the mats that they sell at the dollar store, and it didn't work well at all. I got the one I'm using at Hobby Lobby. The image is now quite sturdy and won't tear. Now I'm going to turn it over and paint the back of the napkin with white Dixie Belle chalk paint. I'm going to put another napkin behind this one. Napkins are very translucent and the other napkin would show through this image. The white paint will block the other napkin from showing through. You can use this technique if you want to decoupage a napkin on a dark background. I let the paint dry for about 30 minutes. 
All the products and tools I use and recommend in my videos have been tested by me. I won't suggest something that I haven't used myself. Each product will be listed in my description box below and we'll have a blue link to make it easy for you to find. Any of the links I provide are safe for you to click on. I want this image to show up very clearly, so I'm fussy cutting it. You can see that now the blue mat doesn't show through the ducts. But because the napkins are so porous, you can see a few white dots here and there. Those can be corrected with a little bit of paint if you like. I watered down the yellow paint a little bit and I'm dabbing it on the ducts here and there with a sponge to cover up the little white dots. I used a watered down medium brown to dab at the bottom. Now all the little white dots are covered up. I'm going to be doing a series of reverse decoupage plates. Each video will be something different with different techniques to try. I haven't even decided how many I'm going to do yet. I'm just going to keep doing them until I run out of ideas. So help me out. If you have an idea for a plate, let me know in the comments. You'll want to subscribe so you don't miss any of these videos. They're going to be a lot of fun. Now it's time to add these adorable ducks to the plate. I'm going to glue them on using Polyvine Multi-Surface Lacquer. I painted it in the center of the plate and then centered the ducks on the plate. I put my image with the front of the napkin placed downward so you can see the image from the front when you turn the plate over. We're doing everything in reverse with this project. I used a piece of plastic to smooth out any wrinkles or air bubbles. After applied, this will need to dry for several hours. The napkin isn't delicate any longer, so you can use your fingers if you need to. At this point, the napkin isn't going to tear unless you use excessive force. I'm going to use some of the antique paste around the edges of the ducts to make them stand out a little bit. I'm rubbing it on at the edges and then wiping off the excess with a soft cloth. If you'd like to be notified anytime I upload a new video, click the bell. Look at this gorgeous napkin. I just love tulips. And it's round, which is perfect for doing the reverse decoupage plates. I'm going to give it a quick ironing with my little mini craft iron to get out some of the fold creases. I put a piece of parchment over top of it so it wouldn't burn. This little iron gets really hot. I'm separating the layers of the napkin just like I did with the ducks. This is a three layered napkin as well, so I'm removing the bottom two layers. I'm using the multi-surface lacquer as my decoupage glue. I'm brushing it on the center of the plate over top of the ducks and to the first edge. I'm not doing the sides of the plate just yet. I'll do those in just a few minutes. I'm folding the napkin in half so I can easily determine the center of the plate and napkin. I'm placing the napkin on the plate with the printed side down again so it can be seen from the front side of the plate. I'm brushing over the napkin with the lacquer very delicately. At this point, the napkin is very vulnerable to tearing, so use an extremely light touch. Don't be concerned with any wrinkles. The crackle varnish we put on the plate at the beginning will disguise any wrinkles. I'm elevating the plate on a paint container so the edges don't touch anything. Now I'm brushing the lacquer from the center edge down to the bottom edge of the plate, being careful not to go over the bottom edge. Make sure to completely saturate the napkin with the lacquer, especially at the edge of the plate. And again, don't be concerned with any wrinkles. When we're done with this plate, 
you won't see them. This will need to dry for a couple of hours. Make sure it's completely dry before moving on to the next step. Let's turn this over and take a peek. So cute. Now I'm taking some sandpaper and going in a downward motion on the edge of the plate, which cuts off the excess napkin. The sandpaper shears it off in a nice clean cut. I'm going around the entire plate. I'm going to paint the entire back of the plate with white chalk paint. I'm using Dixie Bell. This paint is really nice. It goes on smooth and creamy. I'm painting from the center of the plate down to the edge, but not going over the edge. This paint dries fast. I let it set for about an hour. If you don't want to use white, you can use another very pale color, such as off-white. Dark colors will show through the napkins because they're so translucent. So make sure you stay away from dark colors. Now you can paint the back of the plate any color you want. I chose Carnal Mustard by Dixie Belle because it's the same color as the ducks and some of the tulips. Once you have that white base coat, you are good to go. Whatever color makes you happy or coordinates with the picture on the plate. In some future plate videos, I'll be showing you some really fun techniques to try on the back of these plates. You could leave the plate just like this and it would be beautiful. But when have you guys ever seen me leave something alone? So here goes. Let's add another crackle finish. I'm using DecoArt One Step Crackle. I waited for the yellow paint to dry about an hour, and now I'm brushing on a very generous coat all over the back of the plate. The thicker it is, the bigger your cracks will be. This will need to dry for a couple of hours before we can move on to the next step. I'm using my heat gun again for just a few minutes to intensify my cracks. You can use a blow dryer as well. Don't use it for very long or get too close. You don't want your paint to bubble. I'm using the antique paste to get all those little cracks to come forward. I'm wiping it on and then wiping it off right away. It'll stay in all the cracks. This crackle method makes the plate look like aged pottery. Some of those cracks just look amazing. What do you guys think of this project? I would love to hear from you. It's such a pleasure reading everyone's comments. I let that dry for about 30 minutes and now I'm giving the whole thing a coat of Polyvine Heavy Duty Wood Varnish. I'm using a special paintbrush that is made by Polyvine specifically for their varnishes. It's wonderful and spreads the varnish out nicely, eliminating brush marks. Polyvine makes several different formulas and this one is heavily resistant to moisture and heat which makes it perfect for projects that will be exposed to water and heat. All polyvine varnishes are UV resistant, so you can put your creations in sunlight without fear of fading. And don't let the word wood in the name of this amazing product fool you. It's fabulous for any type of project. I use it for a finishing varnish on all my projects. I let the varnish dry for about an hour and now I'm using sandpaper to remove any varnish or paint that is on the very edge of the plate. I'm going around the whole plate making it nice and smooth and then wiping off the dust. I'm going to give this plate a pretty gold edge to give it a high end look. I'm using Pentart gold paint. 
I'm using my finger instead of a paintbrush so that I have better control. I'm putting it just on the edge and wiping any paint off that goes on the top of the plate or the bottom. This is such nice gold paint and the coverage is amazing. It doesn't show through like most metallic paints. Don't forget, all of the wonderful products I'm using today can be found at my favorite place for craft supplies, decoupagenapkins.com. And I'll leave you links in my description box below. I let the gold paint dry for about 30 minutes and then gave the back another coat of the heavy duty wood varnish, making sure to get the edge with the gold paint. You will need to wait 48 to 72 hours cure time before you can use your gorgeous plate. This plate is now highly water resistant, but don't put it in a dishwasher or submerge it in water. This will be hand wash only. I put together a playlist of some other tutorials you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking my picture in the top right corner so you don't miss any future videos.